Hello and welcome to the first ever chess game of Magnus Carlsen. I decided to start a new series in which I'm going to show you the first ever games of, of world champions and very famous chess players. I'm going to start it with, uh, of course, the current world champion, Magnus Carlsen. So that we can actually see that these players at least used to be mortals and they were also once beginners at this, at this game of chess. So let's, let's start with the game. So this game was played in 2000 October at the point that Carson was only 9 years old. And this game was played in the German Bundesliga, so the German team championship. And the opponent is a Fide Master, Kortz Ingo. And Carson is with the white pieces. Uh, and this is actually a classical game. So it's played in 2000, so the, they played a regular time control at that time. So 2 hours for the first 40 moves, then 1 hour for the, for the rest of the game. So let's... Uh, or maybe even more time after after move 60, but uh, we will see that this game is not going to go that far. So let's get started. Karzen plays the move d4, which is actually somewhat unusual. Young players usually start with e4, but Karzen was already different at this point. So knight f6, c4, c5, knight f3, takes, takes, e5, and we will see that after knight b5, Quartz Ingo decided to play the so-called Kasparov Gambit in the first ever chess game of Karzen. Actually quite funny. So comes cd, bishop c5, knight c3, which is actually a good move. It shows that Carlsen uh, does know some theory. Comes castled, and here white has uh, several uh, continuations. There is g3 that's normal, there is a3 that's normal, and actually Kasparov won quite some nice games in, in that. But uh, Carlsen makes the move e3, which is quite logical as well. It shuts off this bishop. So now comes e4 from, uh, from courts Ingo from black h3, rook e8, and Carson decides to make a quite an active move, g4. With the idea, of course, is that probably putting the bishop on g2, trying to kick out this knight, and then uh, hopefully take this pawn as well. But we will see that this is actually way too, uh, way too ambitious. So here the best mo uh, move, according to the computers, would have been just to play h6, with the idea of controlling the g5 square, and uh, while asking what white wants to do. Uh, but other normal moves are just like playing knight a6, knight c7, taking this pawn, or playing b6, bishop b7, and taking the pawn. So, um, yeah, actually, g4 doesn't look like a good move. And uh, as far as I saw in the in the database, um, well, maybe one person repeated this later on, or probably not not even anyone. So it's uh, yeah, it's not doesn't look like a good move. So, but. Uh, the opponent of Karzen played the move rook e5, which is actually not a not an incredibly good reaction. So the point of rook e5 is of course trying to take on d5, and also it tries to prepare some moves like h5, controlling the g5 square and uh, asking questions on the king side. But the problem for black is that actually knight takes d5 is not a threat because you're going to be just simply pinned along this line, and the rook on e5 looks funny. So the best way to continue would be just playing the move a3, with the idea of being b4 and then bishop b2, and his bishop can ask questions to this rook what, what the rook wants to do. But here actually comes, uh, instead of a3, Karza makes uh, quite a huge strategical mistake actually. So he plays the move bishop c4. And the problem with bishop c4 is that uh, now you really leave this, all these light squares on the king side completely unprotected, and also the bishop on c4 is not placed well. It will be kicked out either by e6, b5, or knight d7, knight b6, or we will see in the game a maneuver of knight e8, knight d6. So this bishop is really not well placed here. And also it's not necessarily yet to protect this pawn, because as, uh, as I mentioned before, it's not hanging because of the pin on the d-file. So bishop c4 is quite a weak move, and after this actually the computer said that black is doing really very well. Now comes knight d7, pin b3, and here immediately black could have asked the question knight, with knight b6, what do you want to do with this bishop? And actually black is doing again really fine. But uh, knight e8 was the move that the black played, which is also quite normal, knight d6, and not asking question to this bishop. Comes knight d2, knight d6, bishop goes back, queen h4, and now comes knight c4. And after takes takes, while black uh, seemed to have quite, uh, quite an attacking and aggressive style, here there could have been some like normal moves like a6 or so, but black decided to sacrifice another point, plays the move b5. 
So one more pawn sacrifice and after queen takes b5 now white is up by two pawns. And if we stop here for a second, let's let's just evaluate the position. So white is up by two pawns, but he's very, very uh, much behind in development. His queen is still like walking around the board. It's going to be chased any further with, with rook b8. And here on the queen side, uh, the black piece is starting to sort of pile up and tries to to launch an attack. So there could be some h5 coming at some point. The knight could be rerouted. His f2 pawn seems very weak in the long run. So black has mm, certainly sufficient compensation, but actually white is up 2 pawns, so the game is quite interesting. So now comes rook b8, queen a4, knight f6, putting some more pressure on this pawn. The white queen goes back, uh, knight d7, and actually we can see that Karzan is unrated at this point, his opponent is over 2200, but Karzan is not repeating with queen a4. Karzan goes for the win and actually um, makes a quite a weak move. So here it would have been natural to finally try to start developing your pieces. So something like a4, a3, b4, bishop b2, or simply immediately b3 and, uh, and bishop b2, so moves like this. Uh, makes the most sense, but after knight d7, Karzan played the move d6. And the problem with this d6 is that, uh, yeah, of course you want to take the e4 pawn, but now the position is going to be even more opened, and once you are behind development, opening up the position is usually just a suicide. We will see that uh, the opponent of Karzan will be able to punish the later world champion pretty badly. So here comes the move rook e6, with the idea of wanting to take on d6, of course, probably even with the rook. So white absolutely has to take on e4, so we have some sort of control for the time being. But here comes the nice move from, from the opponent, bishop b7. And after takes, takes, now if we stop again for, for a second, we can see that white cardinal is now up by 3 pawns, but the whole black army is ready to attack. While white is nowhere in development, his rook is even hanging. Um, and actually the end is, end is close for Carson. So here comes the move rook h2. Now bishop takes d6, taking one pawn again with the, with the tempi attacking the rook. Carson here plays the move bishop c4. And here actually black has several, several nice ways to finish up the game. So the most straightforward move, which is bishop takes h2, is uh, actually winning, but it is more complicated than it seems like. So after bishop e2, the problem is that you take, take, and it seems like that you are up a, on a, a piece right now of, uh, with black, but after queen e6, king h8, queen e4, uh, actually white was able to, to get the piece back. But even this position is actually winning for black, because after rook f8, there is no good way to protect this pawn. And the tactical justification is that after queen g2, black can just take on f2, queen f2, bishop g3, and black is going to collect uh, everything on the king's side and then win the game. So this was one win, but I just wanted to show you because of this pretty nice motive at the end with rook takes f2, but actually bishop takes h2 in this position is by, uh, is, 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 is really not the best move. So here there are very many better moves, and Karzen's opponent played one of them to move rook d8. And after queen takes a6, now we can take the rook. And when the bishop takes, you can just take it back. And even though material-wise now white has four pawns, no, three pawns for the piece, only his queen is, is developed, and he's going to get mated immediately with bishop f3 and rook d1. There's not much he can do about this. So Kazan played the move queen a2, came bishop f3, bishop d2, so trying to, to avoid the immediate checkmate. But after queen h3, queen e2, king h8, Queen e7, if, if you wish, you can stop the video here and try the fastest way to, to win the game. So queen e7 is a bit of a tricky move to, to try to play a queen takes d8 and also trying to set up some counterplay play with bishop c3. But the quickest move to, to uh, force resignation is bishop c7, after which Karzen indeed resigns because his rook is now protected. And if you take the, the apparently hanging bishop, you can just checkmate with, uh, with one move. Yeah, so this was the first ever chess game by Magnus Carlsen. We could see that he uh, he clearly knew already at, at nine years old how to play chess, which was pretty good, but he still had a, a very long way to become a world champion. 
So let me know what you think about this series and who else do you want to see to uh, to, to be covered in the in this series. I'm thinking about uh, Gary Kasparov to be the next one and also the 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 youngster now Alireza Firuja. So let me know what you think. And uh, yeah, as usual, you can always check out my my other videos. You will see the, on the screen the, a video from actually about Carlsen, but this time about his uh, him being the world champion and how how much money he actually makes. So you can actually contrast this game and uh, the world champion Carlsen. Uh, otherwise, see you in the in, in the next videos of this series.